Hi everyone, this is Abhina from Phonebunch and today we are benchmarking the Micromax Unite 2A106 running Android KitKat right out of the box. Let's have a look at the hardware specifications. You can see the model number right up top. MT6582M chipset running Android 4.4.2 KitKat. It comes with a 4.7 inch IPS WVGA display that's 480 by 800 pixels. Now coming to system, you can see it's an ARM V7 based quad core processor that's MT6582M again and you have the Mali 400MP2 GPU that's powering the graphics here. Now coming to memory you have 964MB of RAM available out of 1GB and you have about 900MB of internal storage. You have 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash which according to the app is capable of recording 1080p videos. We'll check that out and you have a 2 megapixel front facing camera as well. You have a 2000 mAh battery powering the device. You also have an accelerometer, a proximity sensor and light sensor available on the phone. All three are working fine. Now let's start with the benchmarks. First we are going to run the Antutu benchmark. We have fast forward all the benchmarks to get to the results quickly. The scores have loaded. Let's have a look. We got a score of 17914 which is again the highest score in this segment. Higher than the Lava Iris 406Q as well as the Moto E. Now we are running the Quadrant Benchmark. This has been fast forward as well. Let's submit the score to get a comparison chart going. And we got a whopping score of 8803 which is again quite high. It's higher than the Moto E definitely and higher than even the Titanium S1 Plus which got the highest score in this segment earlier. Now we are running Nina Mark 2. It will test the graphics prowess and give us an FPS rate. We got 63.4 FPS again the highest of the bunch. We have seen the same chipset on the Canvas 2.2 earlier with a QHD display where it performed quite well. Now we are running the Velamo HTML5 chapter. It will run Sun Spider as well as V8 Benchmark Suit, testing the performance of the browsing engine. So we got a score of 1924, which is again a really good score. This test didn't run that well on the Moto E due to compatibility issues, but it doesn't seem to be a problem with the Unite 2. Now we are running the metal chapter of LMO. It will specifically test the processing capability. We got a score of 577, which is again a really good score. Highest of the bunch, higher than the Moto E, the Iris 406Q, as well as the Titanium S1 Plus. And you can see it's just below the Google Nexus 4. Now we are running the Linpack single thread test. We got a score of 112.07. Again, a very high score. Highest of the bunch and 250.99 on the multi-thread test, which is again the highest of the bunch, even higher than the Titanium S1 Plus. Now we are testing multi-touch capabilities. I have six fingers on the display, but only two are detected. So it's a two-point multi-touch display, which is a bit disappointing given that the Moto E supports five points of touch. Well, folks, that was the benchmarking review of the Unite 2. You can see that even in general performance and the UI, there is no lag anywhere. The phone performs great, the touch response is excellent and moreover, the build of the phone is really solid. There is no creaking, there is no flex anywhere, it's great to hold in the hand. The display has good color saturation levels as well. We'll be back with more on the Unite 2. Till then, you can watch its unboxing from right here as well as the benchmarks of the Moto E and the Lava Iris 406Q. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, just hit us in the comment section. Thanks for watching and have a great day.